Sure. 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 And the other stations are tuned in too. ALP Aftermath. Swing. With your host, Kennedy Lucas. On Swinky 93.3 Radio Station. The Heat 94.6 Radio Station. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gentlemen, man, women, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, females and males, welcome back to another exciting podcast here today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, of course, KLP Aftermath Season 5. Of course, can, uh, huge congratulations to all of us here uh, in the studio. Thank you guys so very much for not only staying tuned for the podcast here today um of course we've got our crew here addison and arthur they're here t he's here monica she's here everybody is here and they're so excited uh first off i gotta say to all of my peeps out there my fan base number one thank you thank you for season five this the premiere season episode today we have topics today on today's radio show but you know we're kind of going a little bit off script today. I'm fully back, fully healthy, I'm ready for another exciting podcast. Of course, uh, happy, merry Christmas. I know Christmas is done and over with for 2022, but I got to say, guys, happy new year, crew. Happy new year. It's 2023. Now, we're one year away from the dreaded year of 2020, and I am so thankful to, number one, to still be alive and kicking it. Uh, for you guys, I, I'm I'm stoked. I'm excited. I'm very very happy um, to be alive. Number one, and number two, we're we're bringing you guys another exciting uh, episode, another exciting podcast. KLP Aftermath Season Five, and I'm thankful. I'm very very thankful to bring you guys another exciting radio show here today. Um, I, you know, five seasons. Wow. Like I remember when we did season one of KLP Aftermath. It was just the first season last 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 fall i want to say um and now we're many many seasons in and now we're at season five i am thankful i'm grateful new studio by the way if you guys notice it we got a new studio set up as well uh for this next uh this continuous seasons of course we've got many many uh seasons to come uh, thank you thank you guys thank you everybody who's been staying tuned and i really hope this spring season uh will be fantastic it is january uh by the time you hear the podcast is january 2nd monday so again we're on 2023 now let me just break it down to you guys like i say in this podcast in every podcast we're gonna have our topics we do have our must watch list um we do have our game of the week and also uh addison and arthur they're here in the studio they're getting ready their reports together because they're gonna give us their news for today but let me just let's let's slow down a little bit on the podcast KLP from our season five uh premiere episode here's what we've got planned guys um so much is, is planning right so much we've got coming up for you guys uh i'm excited skipper and carper saves the world comes out later this month uh, that is a film that we did back in 2019 and now we're bringing it back for 2023 for amazon prime video so uh if you guys know of prime video we have two films on there already street style and new york culture and hardline second term so i'm excited street uh skipper and copper saves the world is it's a new movie but it's kind of we've redone some scenes you know we we recorded this back in 2019 and we had it out people loved it and of course obviously we took it down because prime video want us to remake it a little bit so that way we have it for prime video um, that comes out later this month so excited promotions going out for that as well um, that movie i can say it's a little bit it's goofy it's funny it's comedic but it's kind of an adventure type of movie um, so i really do hope everybody gets some good laughs out of that january of course not only that i'm still in grad school i'm blessed to be in grad school you know it's one of those things that we're doing along the sideways but january is kind of be a focus month uh, if guys if you guys don't know about me uh, posting on twitter posting on instagram this is the year of me to stay focused and it's a year to continue building now i'm going to go more in depth of that on well i probably did it already of course last night we're doing the beyond swanky podcast again that's another podcast show of mine got renewed for season two um 
And I kind of elaborate on the Beyond Swinky podcast. So again, after watching this show, go back to last night's episode of the Beyond Swinky podcast. Of course, we've got some some good things, some good topics to talk about. But I'm serious. This is a, a year that I stay focused, right? We have so many things this month. Skipper and Copper travels, uh, saves the world. Um, and then we are studying up for, um, for street style. Of course, you guys don't know, Street Style of New York Culture is my first documentary about New York City. And it's no secret, everybody knows we are traveling back in February to go to the great state of New York to film part two of the series. Of course, Street Style Homecoming will start production in February. I am so excited because we saved, number one, we saved up a lot of money with the company so that way we can make this trip happen. We increased our equipment. Of course, we have gotten two new cameras here to our studio. We have uh, two Canon cameras that will be traveling with us as well. Very thankful for that. We increased our inventory with our photography. We have one huge DSLR Sony photography camera that's going to be traveling with us as well. So our equipment has grew. And it gets us really, really excited because this documentary that we're filming, we're, we're writing the storyboard now and we're planning some things out. And this documentary is going to be second, uh, going to be different from the first one. Can't really give you guys too much information quite just yet because we're still super early. But that is what's in the works this year. Eden Prime. Of course, Eden Prime rap production last year, I got to say now, last year, 2022, and it's scheduled to be out this year. So again, so much is going on with uh, growth. So much is going on with newer uh, quality of content. Podcasting is still going out with our new studios, new equipment, and different stories. Of course, uh, breaking um, Flash News is a new news show that's coming out for klp entertainment news breaking you guys know about news breaking already when we have of course addison arthur beatrice um who else or henry you know everybody's being a part of klp entertainment and we're giving you guys some great content so um 2023 is a year focus i cannot wait there's going to be some new things that come about this year we've got some films coming out this year it's just going to be a great year for klp entertainment when it comes to growth so uh i, I again before we get to our topics today uh thank you i i'm blessed i'm highly favored i'm glad to be alive i'm glad for my health i'm glad for uh all the things we work hard for um so I, I can't express it enough guys thank you thank you thank you now let's get on to what we need to talk about here on today's show and i gotta say before we continue on ladies and gentlemen spoiler alert again spoiler alert now if you haven't seen this limited series on peacock right now y'all missing out number one number two pause this podcast if you got peacock go watch this limited uh, series and then come back to the podcast because i think i gave people enough time to watch this series before we got into it of course it's been two weeks since we've been podcasting uh again guys we took breaks from for christmas and new year's eve a well-rested break my crew's here they're well rested they had a fantastic new year's eve yesterday i went to the gym of course went to the gym and i'm so excited because this podcast is brought to you by nutritional frontiers now nutritional frontiers is a new line of supplements that is out available right now they sell all kinds of workout protein shake supplements for you guys of course in my house i have the nutritional frontiers chocolate protein shake where it's the powder and you mix it in with either milk water milk or water you mix it together and you have a nice protein shake personally for me i like to have my protein power powder mixed with ice and water that's just me a lot of people can mix it with milk a lot of people can make it mix it with different um, um liquid styles i really wouldn't recommend juice with chocolate because it's not going to taste as good i recommend water and ice it's, it's almost like you're making a hot chocolate in a way um but of course nutritional frontiers it's available right now you guys get your uh box of supplements let me tell you for all my gym goers out there if you really want to bulk up you do have to have protein shakes not just lifting weights and eating good those are good good traits to get bulked up and to stay healthy but you guys have to dabble into uh protein shakes to get you bulked up here's a trick um for our sponsor today here's our here's a trick for what we do um i when i get ready for the gym session and typically every sunday i go to the gym and i make my shakes when i get up 
right? Nice, it's made up, blended up, mixed up. And I leave it in a cold temperature, whether it's a refrigerator, sometimes I leave it in. The, right now, it's okay to leave a shake in the car because it's a little cold right now. I don't recommend when the summertime comes around and you're using protein shake, don't leave your shake in the car because it gets hot. It's not gonna taste as good. Keep it refrigerated. So when you get ready after your workout, you're drinking your protein shake. That's kind of a trick to it. A lot of people, a lot of people mess up when they do a protein shake before a workout. You necessarily can do that. I just don't recommend doing that because if you are drinking a heavy protein shake before a workout, your workout may not be as good. So that's why I do my protein shakes after my workout. So that way it helps me woke up. So Nutritional Frontiers, guys, get your supplements today. We're going to have it in the link description below as well. Now, back to what we're talking about. And guys, we're talking about it. Spoiler alert. The best man, the final chapters. Now, I did gripe about this series not being a movie. Um, I would have loved to see this become a movie. I get why they didn't want to make this a movie because right now there's a lot of streaming services that are available right now that a lot of people can do. But in this series is so good. It's season one. And I got to give you guys my take on it again. Again, spoiler alert, because I'm about to spoil some things if you haven't seen this show. The show is available right now if you have a Peacock subscription. It is the Best Man Holiday, the final chapters. Of course, you have the amazing returning cast of, and I, and I hope I don't butcher these names, uh, Melissa DeSosa to play Shelby, Nia Long to play Jordan, Morris Chestnut to play Lance, Tay Diggs to play Harper, Sinai Lathan to play Robin, uh, Terrence Howard to play Quentin, and Regina Hall to play candace and then harold I, i'm gonna butcher his last name and I, I really hate that i'm going to butcher harold per, perino to play merch so those are the key uh people the key characters that we saw from the best man movie back in 1999 now i remember i've seen the best man the first one i didn't see this in 1999 because around that time i was about what i want to say i was three years old so i didn't know of this movie in 1999 but as i got a little older of course i watched this movie and then i watched the best man holiday i remember the best man holiday coming out in 2013 because i went with my mom and my brother my mom really wanted to see it so we went to theaters to see the best man holiday now i did gripe about this because I was hoping that this would be a movie, right? A, 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 a long cinematic, a cinematic feature film, if you will, from Malcolm D. Lee. But I take back what I said, Monica. Of course, me and Monica, we sat down at the house. We watched this. This has so much that they probably couldn't have fit in a movie, right? There's so much content that they filmed and produced out that yes i can see why they didn't make this a movie of course this following the friends i'm gonna just refer them the friends everybody what happens after 2013 what happens after mia dies of course mia is the wife of lance played by morris chestnut i forgot the the lady's name and i, I hate that i'm butchering this name um but she's in it mia her character she's in the the this series as kind of a flashback because unfortunately she dies due to cancer in the best man holiday so now these are going really more in detail what happens to the friends after the best man holiday now first of all of course Terrence howard is one of my favorite quentin is one of my favorite characters of the best man holiday he's just so slick he's so funny he's so rugged he's so he's so comedically funny that it's different to see him in a different light of things in this series now he has his comedic elements but now he's more serious and you remember quentin 1999 quentin terrence howard he's the funny man he didn't want to settle down he was you know he was having sex and making money that that was his that was quentin and it was kind of the same thing best man holiday he was the funny one right but now in this series he's getting a little bit more serious right he gets married or at least attempt spoiler alert he attempts to get married by uh the character that is played um uh, um, uh, um omari is the name played by nicole airy parker that was his wife but then he falls in love with shelby i knew it that them two were going to get married spoiler alert sorry guys i just spoiled it yes shelby and quentin they get married they fall in love now we all knew that that was coming because they had sex in the first movie like a night night one night stand they had another one night stand the best night man holiday and now they fall truly in love 
in this one of course it, it, the series started off with quentin and the, uh, with terrence howard's character quentin and amari they're getting married and of course the marriage didn't go out so well because shelby shows up right shelby shows up because she wants quentin she loves quentin from the very beginning um and now they broke the wedding off and of course one scene i really like was the airport scene spoiler alert guys was the airport scene where terrence howard was like you know he, he canceled his wedding he follows shelby to the airport because shelby was going back to new york and he was like man you got me crying in front of these people and shit you know and he was like i'm not gonna beg he she kept walking he's like okay i'm down on one knee okay i'm down on two knees you know it's so that that is so comedically funny how the way they wrote it because we know quentin to be the, the funny one right and to see him be so sensitive in a good way in this series really does wonders for it um fast forward lance is going through some things of course lance is played by morris chestnut lance is going through some things because of course mia dies in the best man holiday and he's trying to figure himself out of course with his son and his family of course his son lj comes out he's in the lgbtq community it's kind of smart that i'm glad that they went that route with the son because right now a lot of shows are trying to and i don't mean this in a, in a bad way but a lot of people put characters in the lgbtq because they know and I, it's not me saying it, it's just me as a podcast reviewer they know it's gonna sell right so they know that it's going to sell for sure so i'm, I'm glad they played that card um you know a lot of shows they they use lgbt but they use it too much in my opinion to where it it's oversold but in this in this series they they sold it but me as a reviewer and, a, and an analyst i think this sold really well monica because you know it's lj he's an african-american he's black in the lgbtq so they're trying to not exploit it but they want to show that you know in the community because let's be honest you know it's hard for african americans black black americans to, to be an lgbtq and not be judged right and you're looking at it lance is old school now lance the character he's old school where he doesn't understand his son being in the lgbtq right because he's old generation he's taught oh it's a sin to be in the community it's a sin for that too he's taught that way in his generation so now they're telling a story that lance doesn't understand right um i'm glad that they didn't use the f word to describe as a as a um uh, an adjective is it an adjective t comment below correct me if i'm wrong guys but i'm glad they didn't use that word because that's a very sensitive word uh to to describe somebody in that in the community um so i'm glad they didn't use that i'm glad that they have lance understand right he understands his son a little bit more and you know he understand the pronouns they and them so lj um he excuse me they his character his pronouns were they and them right so i'm glad that they showed that and kind of helped educate people because when you're watching the best man the final chapters you're probably looking at people from old generation right because this this movie came the first movie came out in 1999 so you're looking at old generation um that might be looking at this the next step right and it's helping older generation understand and it's teaching them about lgbt it's teaching them about pronouns and the appropriate pronouns for describing someone right so i'm glad that they they showed that in this series as well lance falls in love with uh yavana pearson played by jasmine of course she was the receptionist at quentin and uh, quentin and amari's wedding and she's a receptionist and of course she he proposes to jasmine i'm glad that lance proposed to somebody else right because he always will love mia right he's, he's always going to love mia but it's been years right 2013 2023 it's been some years since she died and i'm glad that he's not moving on so fast but he's moving on he said yes my wife is dead and i still love my wife but i need to move on right because it's been some years um so very very good nia long she's trying to figure some things out herself um she again it's her and tay diggs man her and tay diggs the characters jordan and harper we all saw the first movie where they were in a dorm i want to say it was a dorm room they're in a dorm room they're having sex right they fall in love back in 1999 but of course harper marries robin and we know how that goes robin and harper they have a baby they name it mia off of one of the characters mia that died in best man holiday 
I am really sad about Harper and Robin's ending. Now, spoiler alert. Again, a lot of people, I'm spoiling some things for you guys. I'm sorry. But Harper and Robin gets a divorce. Um, Yeah, that I was shocked. I was very shocked, really. I thought, I knew that they were going to have some problems in the series, right? But ultimately, how their love story ends, it ends in the divorce. Now, I'm going to say this very freely on the podcast, on the radio show today. Um, in the in the series, you're going to see that Harper and Robin, they're going to have some problems, right? A very unhappy marriage is what I'm going to say. It's a very unhappy marriage. They're arguing all the time. To, Harper buys Robin a house and she doesn't like the house. She doesn't. She wants to do her own thing. And they're arguing a whole lot in these series. So in my mind, as I'm watching the series, like, yes, they're not going to make it. They're going to get a divorce. Now, the D word, divorce and marriage and kids, that stuff scares me. I don't want it. I'm just, and you guys know I've been saying that for, for many, many months now. Divorce scares me. It does, right? Because I know about, well, I don't know personally about divorce, but, you know, of course, my parents, they got a divorce, right? So I know the aftermath of it. And they showed this scene to where uh, Robin moves to Ghana with Mia, the daughter. And today's character harper doesn't want her to go because she he doesn't want to be so far from his daughter there is an aftermath that affects on the kids when it comes to divorce if you're married and you're getting divorced you have young kids it's very very hard right kids don't understand they don't understand because they're they're so young and mia's very young in this show she as their daughter she doesn't understand right she's very smart but she doesn't understand it it's, it's heartbreaking um so I'm always going to say, if you're going to get married, make sure you truly love somebody before you get married. Don't rush to a marriage um, because they showed in the first one, young marriage, right? Honestly, I have friends that are married young and it's working for them right now. I don't believe in young marriage. I don't think it works. And this was kind of an example for Harper and Robin. They got married so young and now they're having problems, right? It's been years later i want to say about 20 years from them they're getting married and they got married young they don't truly know each other and now they're getting a divorce right that's the that's kind of the stereotype that's the stigma in today's society and they kind of exploit that in this series so i'm very excited for that uh merch of course merch and candace are going through some stuff too candace uh it's going back to school she's trying to figure her things out because you guys remember regina hall's character candace got introduced into the first movie as a stripper right so now moving forward she's trying to become a little a more successful than she is uh merch he established lawyer but now he's running a school and he's trying to figure it out he has two girls he's trying to figure out the two girls are going through some stuff um and he's trying to figure out how to balance work kids and marriage all at the same time while having issues with harper because if you guys remember if you've seen the series harper wrote a book called unfinished unfinished business right so they explored the book of course he made he wrote lance's um biopic bio a book and now in this series they're making unfinished business into a movie so now all the characters are watching the trailer betraying the characters are portraying their character so it's a whole thing and and merch they made merch look like a punk in this movie right he bent over for shelby before he met candace so now merch merch is going through some stuff too because he started boxing which is very interesting that they they have him box in this series because that means he's going through something right we've done some things i've done some things that you think well kennedy's doing that yeah because it's kind of a mechanism to kind of be distracted right for me working out meditating and gaming and podcasts that's my meditation from all the stress we go through for merch for him to relieve stress and anger it's the boxing and it kind of stems for and they they showed a lot of 2020 um where everybody's struggling uh in the series as well it's a lot going on in the series guys uh they show where robin's going to the riots in 2020 because of george floyd uh quentin spivey quentin he owns the spivey company that owns real estate they open up a hotel but obviously in 2020 it got shut down i know about that because i worked in hospitality before working for an institution um and they laid a lot of people off in marriott because of 2020 so i know about quentin's predicament of not making money in 2020 uh, the, uh everybody's going through financial troubles in 2020 and that's really good that they 
expand that. I'm glad they expanded the story about what happened to these characters in 2020. I'm glad they just didn't drill it in, Monica. Because a lot of shows right now, they use 2020, COVID-19, and they drill the hell out of it in their series to where, okay, we get it. Things shut out in 2020. It's been two year, three years now. I want to say because it's 2023 now. It's been three years since COVID. So COVID still exists, and that's not what I'm saying, but we get it. Stop stop drilling it in because if you're just drilling it in, it gets boring. I'm glad that they exploited that, but then they move on, right? So a lot of people are they're they're working some things out. Shelby's trying to figure herself out. She didn't want to be a real housewife anymore. She's become an anchor, she becomes a newswoman, uh, to be more respected, right? So a lot of people are this that and that's the story in a nutshell guys there's so much that goes on to this series i see why they didn't make this a movie because there's just so much content to where they couldn't make this a movie they had to make this a series because each episode is about 40 minutes so and it's about eight episodes right eight episodes each 40 minute eight episode that would have been over three hours right so i'm glad now that i take it back because when I, when i first got the announcement that hey it's coming to peacock i'm like damn that's another subscription because i don't i have peacock due to a hookup i ain't gonna name that but you know at first i didn't have peacock i'm like damn i'm gonna miss out on this because i don't have it it's another subscription um now that i got the hookup thank you for my hookup um now i see this the series and it's fantastic guys i i i know we harped on this um, majority of the podcast but this is a show that you guys don't sleep on because it is a show i want to see these characters return right what happens to harper and robin after their divorce will quentin and shelby make it in the marriage hell when jordan armstrong played by nick will she find love because she quit her job in the series as well you guys know she runs msnbc she's the head bitch in charge I mean that respectively, uh, Neil Long. I didn't mean that in a mean way. But the HB, I see, head bitch in charge. She's in charge of that, right? So I want to see, will she find another job? Will Jordan and, and Harper, will they fall in love? back? Because they did a lot of reflection from either, for both movies. They did this scene where it was Tay Dick, Neil Long, Jordan and Harper. They're in her house and they're, they're looking at each other and they did a flashback from the 1999 film when they first made love. So will they fall in love, right? We want more, right? I think they're gonna make more. If Peacock says, this is a smash hit, we wanna order season two. I bet you everybody will dig into this, right? I, I, I'm willing to bet you, not seriously, but I'm willing to bet you $100 and this team man you can have this bet if peacock says this season one was fantastic i want season two malcolm d lee make it happen i'm pretty sure everybody's gonna hop on this idea for season two because there's so much more to this story right they're gonna write it they're gonna write more into it so and maybe that's something they're working on as we speak and they just haven't told nobody about yet but I definitely, I want to see more of this series. So let's make it happen for sure. Um, so Peacock, Malcolm D. Lee, make it happen. Make it happen for sure. I want to see it. I, I got to see it. So uh, let's move on to our hip hop news. We got Addison Hayden up in the studio. Hey, Addison, I see you over there getting ready. So what's going on in hip hop news, Addison? Logic is no stranger to working with some of the finest names in movies and TV. But his latest non-musical collaborator may catch even his biggest fans by surprise. In a video uploaded to Instagram on Saturday, December 31st, the Maryland-bred lyricist gave fans a sneak peek at a studio session with actor Rain Wilson, who's best known for playing Dwight Schrute in The Office. My man is making beats right now, and he's really snapping, Logic says in the clip before turning the camera to Wilson, who can be seen tapping away on an MPC in the rapper's home studio as a jazzy boom bat beat plays in the background. You may be black, logic jokes, to which Wilson replies, right, with a comedic shrug. Look who stopped by to cook some beats, the Bobby Tarantino rapper added in his caption, playing off Dwight's love of the vegetable in the popular NBC sitcom. Logic and Wilson's unlikely cook-up session was met with excitement by some of the former's rap peers such as Lex Luger, Nems and Medain T.Y.O. Woo! 
Fire emojis, he's definitely my fave on the office now, Luger commented on the post, while Nems added, my guy Dwight, legendary. Logic isn't the only office fan in hip hop. Dwight Schrute has also been referenced in songs by Paul Wall, Michael Christmas and Das Racist, while Childish Gambino, Post Malone and Lucky have name-dropped Steve Carell's character, Michael Scott. While it remains to be seen whether any music will come from his studio session with Rain Wilson, Logic is still looking to work with more conventional names. Back in November, the 32-year-old revealed his down to do a joint album with producer extraordinaire The Alchemist. Of course at Alchemist is one of the greatest producers of all time. It would be an honor, he tweeted in response to a fan asking about a potential collaboration between the two. I'll, we could finish an album in a weekend brother. Let's do it. Logic has also teased a full-length project with Madlib, which has spawned a handful of early singles. But as he told Apple Music's Zane Lowe last year, the bandana beatmaker's inability to remember the samples, owing to a shroom's trip, has put the brakes on its release. We did that in a weekend and Egan, Alapat, Madlib's former business partner, sent me basically every Madlib beat that he's ever done, he explained. I mean, gigs and gigs and gigs from 2005. I went through and made my perfect album of all my favorite beats, then I just rapped on them all. He continued, Madlib comes over and he's like, yo, Bobby, this is crazy. I was like, really? You like it? He's like, I love it. I'm like, wow. He's like, there's just one thing. I don't remember any of these fucking samples. We can't clear it. I was on Mushrooms 15 years ago when I made this beat. I don't know. One album that didn't suffer from behind the scenes delays was Vinyl Days, Logic's star studded seventh studio album, which arrived in July 2022. The project was recorded in just 12 days and marked his final release on Def Jam Records, with whom he had been vocal about his frustrations over the years. That's my favorite part I'm off Def Jam, he said on Logan Paul's impulsive podcast following its release. I made that album so I could leave, and guess what? I left them with some of the dopest shit I could give them. It's not like I just wiped my ass. What am I excited about? I'm excited to be independent, I'm excited to do my thing. He added, I'm really happy to know that I represented and low-key was the face of the label, one of the illest hip-hop labels of all time, and that I sold millions and millions of records and gave them billions and billions of streams, and that it was a good partnership. Wow, that's very fantastic. Some news today, very, very excited for that. Um, so more of, of hip hop news, uh, I wanted to kind of give you guys an update. We, we did a news breaking about this, but Tory Lanez, Tory Lanez, he's going down. He was found guilty on all charges. Of course, he did a jail call to Megan's friends to apologize. So, uh, we going to follow more of that story because I want to know how long and uh, story probably already broke by the time we're recording, but, um, I'm kind of sad for Tory Lanez, right? Because Tory Lanez is, is a good artist. I, I like his music. Um, this was not drawn out but it was a lot his his dad had a lot to say we saw it on social media his daughter the little girl his daughter oh no his brother no his sister uh, said a lot said a lot but i think she was just she was young she didn't know what she was talking about um but tory lanes man i don't know these these artists have to stop doing stupid stuff right because it's not worth it at the end of the day now your career is tarnished and i'm sure tory lanes and megan they're not going to make any more music after that so I cannot wait to see the Breakfast Club is going to be talking about it very soon if if they haven't already. Joe Budden, shout out to Joe Budden. He doesn't know who I am, but I'm a huge fan of his podcast. I love Joe Budden, Ice and Ish and Parks. I love their podcast because it is so freaking funny to me. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to see what other podcasters are saying about the trial because it's one of those things that it does happen now i just wanted to talk about something before we get to our sports news because we got arthur brooks up in the building as well um but the last couple days have been crazy when it comes to airlines and i'm sure they're gonna and we joked i guess we were we were talking in the studio we joked about it but i definitely don't want this to happen when we go get ready to go to new york but 
a lot of um, flights have been canceled. Um, a couple of days ago, we had a storms, right? We had cold weather on Christmas Eve. It was supposed to be the coldest day. We still went out on Christmas Eve. I went with my brother. We went to the mall. We still went out on Christmas Eve. But I am very interested to see. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that things are starting to clear up, guys. But I wanted to make a, a PSA announcement, right? Um, stewardess, airline people, they work really hard um airline people who work for airlines whether it's spirit whether it's frontier right and a lot of people joke about those two because they they're less expensive than let's say southwest and delta and first of all people when you fly spirit or frontier hell we're flying frontier when we go to new york it is not an airline for broke people it is not i would rather pay for less on a flight if it's a good quality flight now i remember frontier last year when we went to new york last year it was fantastic i enjoyed every moment of it the flight was smooth we got there in two hours two two and a half hours right it was smooth and we didn't have to pay so much now you got the big boys delta and southwest i'm not shitting on them i'm sure they're very stuff they're very expensive 300 dollars per person for a plane ticket that's a lot but we really have to give people at work a break we do especially when you're dealing in customer service now i do i'm going to talk about and i've talked about customer service in a different way on the beyond swingy podcast last night so go guys go take a listen to that show but i saw it on twitter i saw it on instagram a lot of people were just yelling at the at the airline people because their flights were getting canceled psa to a lot of people they don't control flights it's true they they don't control flights if flights get canceled there it's unfortunate i know a lot of people pay money for it i know some airlines are giving money back for people who booked a flight and their flight get canceled or delayed right um we have to learn to be grateful for people that's working very hard right because we all know it was the storms a lot of states during christmas they had five inches 10 inches 20 inches of snow right and it's safe to not put other people in harm's way airplanes when it's snowing in a different location if it's raining hard if it's a hurricane watch tornado watch or snowing very hard yes they're going to cancel flights they're going to delay flights because of the safety i personally would rather arrive somewhere safe than to say okay it's raining and it's a tornado watch but i need to get somewhere I need this flight to get to this area, even though that area is got hurricane watch. I need to get there. No, they're not going to risk lives for that. Hence why flights are getting canceled. Now I've seen it on, on, on uh, Twitter and Instagram and T we saw it, which is strange. A lot of people's luggage got sent to the location that they're flying to, but they couldn't get on the flight. Um, I understand the frustration in that where you have your personal item somewhere and you're not there. I understand. There's a, there's a trick to it. If you're flying, all you need on your persons really is your phone and your wallet. As long as you have that on your persons, your luggage that has your... And I can kind of skip it now. If you put your computer, work computer your, your equipment in a luggage and it's lost, I understand. Now, if it's lost and they if, if the airline cannot find it, they reimburse you money to get your stuff back you buy new stuff the, the companies are that rich where let's say if if somebody if sally sue has their luggage and it's sent to for let's use new york for example uh sally sue had her luggage with her laptop and a camera with her clothes and the luggage just got sent to montana and she's in new york right it's unfortunate you gotta wait until that luggage comes to you and if it's lost and these air flights cannot find it whatsoever, they reimburse you a lot of money to get all those things you just lost back. It's in, it's in protocol. That's what they have to do. That's why they make sure they, that doesn't happen. That we saw a couple of days ago, a lot of people got their, their luggage shipped off somewhere, right? Because in the airport, they had millions and millions of luggage just sitting there. Nobody was there until they could get there. So that I understand the frustration in that. That's that's the incompetent part of it. But the problem I have, Monica, is when people are yelling at the airline people, the reception, the clerks that's just doing their job. I saw this one video. The lady was like, hey, if you're yelling at me, I cannot help you. 
that lady i'm sure didn't get fired because again when i worked in hospitality hotels i would check somebody in right if somebody's yelling and screaming at me i have the right to say i cannot service you if you're going to scream at me right my managers and our supervisors they say if somebody screams at you you have the right to not service them if somebody calls you out your name and use derogatory names you all know what i'm talking about because i told my old old boss if i get to, if i get called the n-word i'm not serving that person i might go to jail because i don't punch somebody for calling me the n-word right so we have a right to do that back then same thing with receptionists clerks that work at these airlines they're just working they just work there they want to help they want to ease the pain but if you're screaming at them they're not going to help you right and that's that's within their right doesn't matter if we pay the money for their services if you're going to scream at somebody they will not service you everywhere i go whether i'm ordering food whether i'm out and i need service done on something i'm not going to scream at folks right because especially in if it's hotels and in uh, hospitality i've been to where they've been i know same thing when i work for my institution we're not going to name the name of the institution because you know but you guys know where i work in the institution if a student comes yelling at me i'm like i'm not i definitely am not going to service you if you're yelling at me right so we have a right to do that and i i i i'm thankful for everybody who's in the hospitality industry um hotels airlines uh hospitality restaurant industry people that's serving customer service i applaud you guys because that's not an easy job it's not i've been a customer representative and it's not an easy job you're dealing with all kinds of personalities of people who you're dealing with the people who are annoying you're dealing with the johns and the karens you're dealing with the ignorance you're dealing with a whole bunch of people from all walks of life and it's not an easy job it's not it's, it's not such an easy job and i think we have to learn people who doesn't work in that industry right and it's it's people who per se maybe have a bigger job title than the customer representatives they think they hot shit because they might make six figures and we make f- we might some of us might make five and then some people might make six and seven they think oh i'm better than you because i make seven figures so i'm gonna treat you like shit no that's not how that works nowadays you be on world star getting your ass beat nowadays um so we we just got to be thankful we do now before we close out the podcast here today of course we got arthur brooks up in the studio getting ready to give us our sports news arthur what's new in sports man for the first time in three years david blau trotted on the field as a starting quarterback in the nfl his first victory will have to wait Blau did a commendable job on short notice leading the Arizona fence, but the banged up Cardinals lost their sixth in a row when Young Wei Koo kicked a chip shot field goal on the last play of the game to give the Atlanta Falcons a 20 19 victory Sunday. It was a meaningless game in the standings, with both teams eliminated from the playoffs. But it sure meant a lot to Blau. The 27 year old Texan, who signed with the Cardinals, 4-12, about two weeks ago, wound up being Arizona's fourth starting QB in four weeks with starter Kyler Murray out for the season and Colt McCoy struggling with concussion symptoms. Blau completed 24 of 40 for 222 yards, including a four-yard touchdown to Thray McBride, and the Cardinals had a shot at their first victory since November 13 when Matt Prater booted a 57-yard field goal with 4.57 remaining. Arizona never got the ball back. The Falcons, 6-10, drove nearly the length of the field, draining the clock before Ku booted it through from 21 yards as time expired. I'm the fourth quarterback in four weeks. I get it. It's not an ideal situation. It's not ideal for anybody, Blau said. I don't know what next week holds. Undrafted out of Purdue, Blau wound up with the Detroit Lions during their woeful 2019 season. He got a chance to start the final five games after Matthew Stafford was injured. The Lions lost them all to close out a 3-12-1 campaign, with Blau completing 54% of his passes for 984 yards with four touchdowns and six interceptions. It seemed that would be his only chance. 
Blau played briefly in two games over the last two seasons and was toiling on Minnesota's practice squad when the Cardinals signed him on December 14, shortly after Murray was lost for the season with a knee injury. Blau quickly worked his way up the depth chart. McCoy went out the following week with a head injury, giving way to Trace McSorley. After a 19-16 loss to Tampa Bay on Christmas Day, the Cardinals decided to go with quarterback No. 4 on New Year's Day. I started five games in Detroit, and they didn't go the way I would have liked them to, Blau said. I'm just thankful for an opportunity because they don't come around every day in this league. Still, the result was a familiar one for Arizona and embattled coach Cliff Kingsbury, whose roster has been ravaged by injuries. For the fifth time in the last six games, the Cardinals failed to score 20 points. They had plenty of chances at the Falcons' end of the field, but wound up settling for four field goals. Prater missed another try from 43 yards. It's frustrating. You want to win, Blau said. We didn't do enough, had to settle for too many field goals and at the end of the day, that's on me and the shoulders of the offense. Kingsbury was appreciative of the effort. Guys out there, just learning the system, haven't gotten a ton of reps all season and they're out there trying to compete and win games, the coach said. The Cardinals will have one more chance to send longtime defensive stalwart J.J. Watt out with a win in the season finale at San Francisco. The three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year surprised nearly everyone by announcing his upcoming retirement after Arizona's final home game. Watt had a sack against the Falcons, pushing him to ten and a half for the year, his first double-figure sacks season since 2018. He also had a couple of hits on Falcons rookie QB Desmond Ridder. What knows he's done after next week? Kingsbury could be facing the same prospect after a miserable season. The coach is 28-36 won in four seasons as the Cardinals coach, with only a single one and done playoff appearance. You want to win, Kingsbury said. As a staff, you can't say enough about guys playing their tails off trying to win. Keeping us in games. It's kind of been the story of the season, not being able to finish at the end. Sounds like some good sports news, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur and Addison, for coming in the studio for sure. They always make sure. They always bring a little, a little zazz to the show. I love it. I really do. So that's going to wrap it up here on the premiere episode of Season 5, KLP Aftermath. Again, I got to say thank you to everybody who tuned in. And thank you guys for staying so tuned in all the way from Season 1 all the way up to Season uh, 5. So we are changing some things. If you guys noticed, some of the episodes we have deleted um we uh different locations of where we filmed our podcast we we um got a little bit of trouble for that so uh if you guys notice that some episodes from different seasons have been deleted um there was a reason why we had to delete it i'm not going to go into details i did have some people reach out to us and say hey some of your episodes are missing and i wanted to show my friend one of the episodes um sorry um we had some uh some some minor trouble with that so we had to delete certain episodes that will that been out um so if you guys notice that the name changes and the location changes and things that we're not affiliating with other things no more um because of these troubling uh things that happen to KLP entertainment in general so um we're fine we just had to change up our strategy a little bit so um yeah if you guys notice some of the episodes from previous seasons they have been deleted um, they will not be coming back, but we've got many, many more seasons to premiere newer content for you guys. So appreciate your patience on that, guys. But thank you for staying tuned for today's podcast. If you would like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching the video version of this podcast on Spotify Video and our YouTube at KLP Entertainment. But if you're listening to it on our heart radio, uh, that's a big player of ours, our heart radio. Thank you so much. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Thank you so much. Share with your friends. So that way you guys don't miss the next new episode, next new radio show, next new podcast from us here at KLP Entertainment. I've been your host, KLP Kennedy Lucas. Uh, as always i like to say stay safe oh keep your immune system going guys of course there's the three sicknesses covid the flu and 
another variant of COVID is out. Stay safe, guys. Drink immune. I have, I bought, and this was expensive because I went to Publix. It was like $12, but I needed it. A big box of Amuse powder, right? As emergency, Amuse powder is the apple cider. You mix it in with a drink, whether it's water or orange juice, to keep your immune system boosted, guys, so you guys do not catch sickness. I'm going to make every precaution when I go back to my um other office i'm gonna make sure i mask up because i i cannot afford to be getting sick because around the corner we're heading to new york i cannot be getting sick so stay safe stay healthy and i was, as always i like to say stay swanky peace you are now tuned in to atlanta's hottest radio show and the other stations are tuned in too Swanky 93.3 radio station. The Heat 94.6 radio station.